So Dad's a um, larger than life character, um, he's always out and about, he's very fit, well not very fit, he's strong and big and, and he's a farmer. So when we started to notice things like his memory was going, starting to slur his words, it came as a bit of a shock and it was during Easter time and, I, and Dad was a bit slower, he was really tired, I thought there's something wrong here. Um, we thought, oh just old age, he's pretty forgetful anyway, he forgets our names, a lot. <laughs> but. As the weeks progressed, it got worse, and mum started to notice him forgetting more and more, um, forgetting words, forgetting years that things happened, and he started to drag his leg. And mum was like, whoa, that's not, that's not normal. Um, there's something going on here, there's something seriously wrong. So she took him to town, to the doctor, and they basically said, there's a good chance you've had a stroke, a small stroke, get to Dubbo Base Hospital, which is about an hour and a half away, which is a, a city and let's do some proper tests. They did the tests and the doctor walks out, um, sits my parents down and told dad that he had cancer. Uh, and the reason he knew that is because there were these two dark shadows just above his left ear on the scans. That's cancer. We weren't there, I wasn't there. I was in, in Sydney um, with my other two siblings and then I get this phone call from my mum, it's cancer. And the world stops, life stops. Your life is just upside down in an instant. And you're never ready for it. And it's like, wow. Um, I had to get off the phone. I had to break it to my sister, my brother, our prospective partners. We cried. I, I honestly don't remember anything after that. Um, until I saw my dad the next morning. That was hard, man. That was really, really hard because dad's this big guy. He's this big, larger than life guy. Um, normally when I see my dad, I hug him, you know, but I couldn't because he was lying down. Um, and I just went up and I sort of hugged him and I said, hey dad, how, how you going? And um, he said, I'm all right, mate, I'm all right. We, we soon discovered that it hadn't spread, um, which happens a lot with brain cancer. Um, we would discover that it was operable, which was great news. Um, so the neurosurgeons at RPA set about doing the surgery. They removed as much as they could. They, of course, can't remove all of the, the tumour. It's a glioblastoma multiform, which is the, the biggest, most aggressive brain cancer there is. And then from after that, he had a few weeks to recover. And then next was the chemotherapy and the radiotherapy. So he was in six weeks of radiotherapy and chemo. No one really asked the prognosis and I made sure I did that afterwards when the family were away and I said, I'm the oldest so I kind of took it upon myself to ask these questions and I said, look, how long has he got? And she said, look, in a really quiet voice, um, between 15 and 18 months. That's the majority of, of people who have this disease. And I was just like, oh. Um, that was really hard to take because in your heart of hearts you hope, oh, you know, maybe it'll be five years, ten years, but most cases between 15 and 18 months. And that made me realise that, okay, I've got to get the word out. I've got to get people um, to realise the lack of the funding and, and how prevalent this disease is and donate to research and do all we can to, to get survival rates up to where they should be. I want people to be aware of this disease. I want people to, to donate. I want people to raise money for research into this disease. It's such a fantastic day. You get out, you're getting out of the elements, you're training, you're having fun, but at the same time, you're doing a really good thing by raising money. Thank you so much. We appreciate it so much. Just keep going. What's happening is phenomenal. It's really, really, really is good. I just can't believe it.